my name is Earl Sides. I'm the discipleship pastor at Worth Baptist Church of Fort Worth, Texas. I appreciate Tim Schoenrock asking me to uh, give you some time of daily meditations from God's Word, and I'm honored and privileged to uh, to do that. And I sure thank a lot of Tim and his friendship, and he's sure doing a great job for you guys down at Lighthouse Baptist Church. Well, I want to talk to you today about being a blessed teenager. You want to be a blessed teenager? It's a great question, isn't it? Well, I want to give you some things this morning that uh, I hope that maybe will be an encouragement to you. The Bible tells us how we can be a blessed teenager. The Bible says in Psalm 1, Blesses a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You know, God wants you to be a blessed teenager. And I've seen that many people that uh, have uh, make it a, a uh, priority of theirs to be a blessed teenager, to, to live by biblical principles and walk uh, after the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, set some good roots to be able to make uh, be a blessed adult. So let me give you three ways that you can be a blessed teenager from Psalm 1. Verses one, two, and three. First of all, in verse one, it tells us how we how to be a blessed teenager. First of all, is to be separated from the world. Did you get what it said in verse one? Blesses is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. In First John, the Bible says, "Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him." The Christian life is compared to a walk. And it begins with a step of faith in trusting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. If you've not trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, let me encourage you, uh, do that. You can do that right now. Uh, you can contact Brother Tim, and I know that he'd be more than happy to walk you through and how you can know for sure you're going to heaven. But part of growing in the Lord and, and walking uh, in, in this Christian life is to make good biblical choices. And making steps of faith by, by trusting Christ and being obedient to His Word. You know, walking involves progress. And, and Christians are to make progress by applying biblical truth to daily life. But it's also possible for believers to walk in darkness outside of the will of God. The people that God blesses are careful in their walk. Uh, though they're in the world, they're not of the world. And by contrast, it takes just a little imagination to see that the person walking near sin uh, or, or then standing to consider it is finally sitting down to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. We, we see that development with uh, Peter's disobedience. You know, Peter said to the Lord, I'll never leave you. But yet in the Garden of Gethsemane, what did he do? He, he ran away. and Peter walked away from the Lord. And the next thing we do is we see him standing with the wrong crowd. And before long, we see him sitting by the fire. And, and you know what happened? What happened was he walked right into, right into temptation three times. And we did what? He denied the Lord three times. Listen, if you as Christians and I as Christians is that start listening to the counsel or the advice or the plans of the world then what's going to end up happening, we're going to be standing in the way of their life and we're going to be sitting down and we're going to be agreeing with them. So let me encourage you, be separated from the world. Live unto God, okay? So not only do we need to be separated, but secondly, we need to be saturated with the, with the Word. But His delight is in the law of the Lord and in His law doth He meditate day and night. You know, those whom God blesses are not delighted in what pertains to sin in the world. They delight in the Word of God. Oh, teenager, develop right now a love for the Word of God and be obedient to the Bible, and it will bring blessing to your life. Uh, Joshua 1 8 tells us that this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate thereon day and night, that thou mayest to observe to do according that all is written therein, and then thou make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. You know how many times the word success is found in the Bible? One time. And it's right there in Joshua 1.8. But you go to the 
you go to the Barnes and Noble and you'll find thousands of volumes of books on success. But what does the Bible compute success with? It's on meditating and memorizing and studying and reading God's Word. Meditation is to the soul what digestion is to the body. And it means understanding the Word or chewing on it, thinking about it, making it a part of your inner person. That's how you uh, stay away and be a blessed teenager, by being saturated uh, in the Word. And third, not only do we need to be separated from the world and saturated with the Word, but we need to be situated by the waters. Did you notice what verse 3 tells us? He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That's the blessed teenager. Shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You know, you and I as Christians are compared to a tree that gets its water from the deep hidden springs under dry ground, under the sand. And listen, this world can be a desert at times. It can be dry. It can never satisfy uh, a dedicated believer. And we have to send our roots deep if we're going to get that water. Of course, the water, the drinking is a picture of the Holy Spirit. And, and we need to draw upon the spiritual water of life. And listen, there can be no fruit without roots. And too many Christians are more concerned about the leaves and the fruit than they are the roots. But the roots are the most important part. Unless Christians spend time in prayer and the Word and allow the Spirit to feed them, they will wither and they will die. And uh, listen, the, the believer who draws upon the spiritual life in Christ will be fruitful and successful in the life of faith. Listen, when Christians cease to bear fruit, I can tell you something, there's something wrong with the root. Let me ask you, what type of fruit are you bearing as a teenager? Oh, you say, Pastor, I can't bear any fruit as a teenager. Oh, what about Joseph? Hey, what about Daniel? What about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? What about the Virgin Mary? All those were very use of God because they had those deep spiritual roots. Of course, a perfect example of a godly person of Psalm 1 is the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible tells us in John 14 that He is the way, He is the truth, and He is the life. And He is the way. And Psalm 1 says, Bless the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law doth he meditate day and night. He is the truth, and He is the life. When it says in verse number 3, He shall be like a tree. He is life. Let me encourage you, teenagers. Don't get situated with the world. Be saturated with the Word. Third, be, be situated by the waters. Be situated by the Lord Jesus Christ, and you'll be a blessed teenager. Hey, let me encourage you to uh, be at the youth rally next weekend at New Life Baptist Church. I'm honored and privileged to speak. We're going to have a great time. Bring your friends with you, and uh, I'll be looking forward to seeing you then. God bless you. Thank you for this opportunity, and I hope this has been a blessing to you.